You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fan freaking tastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Oh, my name is Roberto. And this is episode 742. Who feels like it's been a long morning already and we're just getting started, but we are glad to be hanging out with you. Glad that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Really appreciate it. Hopefully we bring you some information that will make your life better and easier today. We like to provide value mm. to make the drone industry great again. It was it was always great, never never really declined. Although, unless you talk to Patrick Egan, who thinks uh, everyone everyone is going to hell in a handbasket. Really? Oh, yeah. He gave me a nice little phone call this weekend, and after about 20 minutes, I just had to say, you know, I just hmm. I just don't agree with you on this one, and As in, I appreciate your time, but I'm going to go back to working. Well, I really don't want to know what he said. If it's all negative, let's just stay positive. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, normally, he has many valid great points, but... Right. Uh, this time I was just like, you know what, dude? I just don't think that everyone is losing money out their ears like you say they are. So, because hmm. I, I even said, uh, he essentially the argument was, you know, a lot of drone businesses are getting acquired and some guys aren't making money. And I mean, we said that in our 2017 trends of the drone industry that over the next couple of years, uh, smaller companies would get acquired by bigger companies. I mean, that is just kind of, an evolution of the it's business the nature environment. Of our economy, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And um, it was just really interesting to me because he was like, yeah, people are losing money. I was like, well, if you talk to our members in our group, um, people are thriving right now. I'm curious about that because if companies are being purchased, they would have to be profitable for anybody to be interested in purchasing them. Or is he saying those that are left behind and are not getting acquired are the ones that are not profitable? Uh, you know, I'm not sure that I dived into it that deeply. Yeah, you were trying to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I so, understand. I mean, he's a good guy. SUS oh, yeah, totally. News is, yeah. is really... Um, They've done some good reporting. They are the publication probably for industry news. I just, um, I think people are doing better than than what he uh, was saying. Anyway, I don't want to focus on this that much in my weekend phone calls, uh, which we can talk about. You know, Rob had Rob and I had a nice email exchange this weekend on how we are going to decorate our new studio because we're actually expanding the studio. Um, we're gonna have two studios. Kind of excited about that. Mm -hmm. And I was I was talking to Rob about how do you create a truly aerial experience in the office. Yeah, we should show a picture of how you plan to do that. No, I think we should leave it up to their imagination. But oh. well, imagine if you were walking on the clouds. I'm just going to leave you with that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today's episode is uh, brought to you by actually our landing pads. If you go to the website, thedroneu.com, and click the banner at the top of the page, you can pick up a landing pad today. These landing pads actually float, so if you want to take off and land from the water, you totally can. I don't recommend it because it takes a lot of skill, but if you want a landing pad uh, that is also good for your knees, if you like to kneel down and work on your drone, then you'll really like this landing pad. Although, no to caution, you do have to come in pretty much straight down when you land on this thing. Um, it is known to kick up a little bit, but um, for me, I like the fact that it floats because if I ever have something happen to the drone, you know, I've got the fact that I could just throw the pad out on the water. So anyway, if you want yeah. a landing pad, just go to the website, thedroneu.com. Um, and also a big shout out and thank you to our community of drone pilots. That is you guys in the drone you community. Uh, you know, I just saw someone's post the other day uh, in the community, and I think it was from TJ Skinner. And I actually, I want to read it because it was it was so good. Mm. TJ Skinner, I think it's Skinner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He said, I, I don't know, I can't really do a TJ accent, so I'm just going to kind of differentiate <laughs> myself from myself. Man, let's do a Southern accent. That'll let's be fun. It. Yeah, let's hear it. Man. I really wish people knew how much more than an online drone school the Drone U community really is. We have some of the most genuine, selfless people here with such a passion to help in every way imaginable. Just know 
that what may be a small gesture to you could be a monumental helping hand to those on the receiving end. And I just wanted to give my sincere thanks to everyone here who makes DroneU so much more than a website or a Facebook group and those who have put me before themselves to foster my growth and development. Well said, TJ, and thank you for taking the time. Was that a little Southern twang on your well said? Probably. (laughs) (laughs) No, but it's heartfelt, and I appreciate him, uh, yeah, just kind of throwing that out there. Yeah, it is really appreciate him and everybody else. We're going to see him on Friday. I'm excited to see TJ and the other crew that's coming out for the conference. We're going to have like a group of 20 people on the training Saturday. Huh? Well, you think all the drone you elite, Mm -hmm. and then your lumpy butt, and then my lumpy butt, (laughs) and six or seven students? Yeah. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's what she said. (laughs) Uh, I am looking forward to it as well Actually we're going to have the obstacle course out in Phoenix Um, If you are around Then uh, come say hey Anyway uh, let's go ahead and get right to the question Because I'm having one silly morning here Hey Paul and Rob Welcome to 2018 So that means this year For a lot of us who started our drone programs uh, That we've got to renew Our licenses coming up So what I'm curious about is on your end, what have you learned? Is there going to be any practical type of exam now? Is there going to be a shorter exam process for us uh, going out there and uh, who have been doing this for the last couple of years? Is it going to be just the same? Um, Are you guys going to update any questions in uh, on drone U? Uh, anything that will help us out because I'm assuming that uh, a lot of us will be getting our licenses this year renewed. So thanks. You guys are doing a great job. I appreciate all the videos, all the classes, all the infield stuff that you guys are up to. I'm looking forward to this year being a great year. Thanks. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate the question. Yeah, so he's talking about the Part 107 recency exam. As you guys are aware every two years we've got to retake the exam. Now, I've had a lot of similar questions um, mm-hmm. uh, as he has. You know, is it going to be shorter? Is it going to be easier? Is it going to be something that is going to be a little bit more uh, streamlined and convenient? Because now there are 70,000 Part 107 pilots. And if I remember correctly, there were about 25,000 in the first month. And then it kind of, we had some like slower growth throughout the year. Right. And if I remember correctly, a lot of those guys took this test on the same day. So now that we've got this influx of people who will be needing to take their recency exam kind of all at the same time, will the FAA come out with some sort of system uh, to streamline this process? Would It would make sense. It um, would. They're going to have to. I mean, obviously. I think so. As opposed to just having everybody retake the test, right? That's sort of the coin. It, we, it, it may just have to be retaking the test. Now, someone asked, are there new questions? There are new questions, and we have already been updating our questions um, in our system online. So if you do go to the drone you and you go back to the part 107 exam questions, there are new exam questions in there. So again, if you are using drone you to study, this is another reason why people, you know, stay around in the drone you because, you know, the technology changes just astronomically fast and you've got to retake the test every year. So you've got to stay up to date on what's going on. You know what? Maybe we should start a new series. Maybe um, called your part 107 question of the week. Hmm. Build people up between now and August. That would be fun. That would be fun. You know, it'd be more fun to see you answering the questions, Rob. (laughs) That would definitely be fun. It would be fun. That would be an adventure. It would actually. (laughs) Um, But anyway, uh, you know, we do have the question out to Mr. Earl Lawrence um, about what we can expect to see for the Part 107 exam this year. Uh, nothing back so far, um, but you know, Vic and I have really been talking a lot about this and what we're expecting to see for the recency exam. On his question for the practical test, I don't believe that we are going to be seeing a practical test anytime soon. Um, and this is actually something that someone else was complaining about that we have you know, these guys that are just flying drones that are 55 pounds without any sort of certification or practical means and knowledge of using these aircraft. Um, And, you know, I hear, you know, what the naysayers are saying. I hear them. Um, But I would also say that I think uh, 
anyone who can afford that type of aircraft, a 55 pound, let's say, uh, you know, here's actually Pulse Aerospace. Um, Alex Hinkle reached out to me. Um, we're hoping to do a podcast with them. Cool. It is a 54 pound drone. We're talking about uh, the Vapor very strategic, 55. Huh? Yes. And I mean, it's got like an eight foot wingspan. It's a, a massive, it's a standard helicopter. Oh, that okay. has a nice, you know, like 15 pound payload. Mm -hmm. And see, he even talks about the uh, Vapor 55 right there. That's why they named it that? I mean, um, look, here's the uh, come out and fly it email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. Um, anyway, there are manufacturer certifications though for these birds. So a lot of times there are manufacturers who are saying, you know, we're not going to sell you this thing unless you let us train you on it. And um, actually some manufacturers at this most recent conference and at CES have reached out to us to have us film training on their specific products, just like Don't Crash Course. Mm -hmm. uh, that way people can become certified much easier than having to go to their physical location. But the naysayers say you should have some sort of other certification beyond Part 107 to fly these bigger birds. I say I think the manufacturers are doing a good job at ensuring safety and responsibility. Hmm. So when you say that they're doing a good job of ensuring safety and responsibility, you mean through their documentation, through no, their, through their training? training programs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But they'll sell you one without you going through their training program, right? There are some that do that, uh, but there are a lot that do not. Yeah. So it's it's actually kind of an interesting uh, setup. So, so what is this particular drone going to be good for? Just out of curiosity. This particular since you drone it up. is really really good for mapping large areas with lidar. Oh, it's got okay. a one hour flight endurance. Okay. The only issue is, and we kind of talked about this in the LIDAR conference show, is that one of the big kind of hiccups with UAS is that you can only fly at line of sight, which means UAVs are being significantly hindered in their ability to provide um, services. Yeah, just all the value that they kind of have captive. Yeah, they're kind of being held captive, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, I think is the right word to say, because of the limitation in space. I mean, if you can only fly, let's say, 2,500 feet, which is normally visual line of sight, um, you're not going to be able to cover a large swath of area and mapping, and thus you become less competitive to people using helicopters and manned aviation, which then begs the question, which is really more safe, someone flying in the air at super low altitude with lots of obstacles or a larger UAS flying beyond visual line of sight. Now, let's say that there was some range, like they gave you like maybe five miles of beyond visual line of sight instead of just being like, oh, yeah, you can fly BVLOS all day long and fly over cellular and go 100 miles out. Yeah, no big deal. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. No. But I think if we had like a five or a 10 mile, uh, you know, a BVLOS limitation, I think that would be significant in helping birds like this you know, m map larger swaths of area. Now, is it still possible to use these machines to large, lar to map large areas? I can't talk this morning. Yes, it is. You're just going to have to be doing a lot of moving around with your feet. Right, absolutely, or your four-wheeler. Or hiring or... a boom truck. There you go. Like the commercial we saw this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get up, get up high. That was really funny. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but, you know, back to his questions. Um, part, just a quick recap. Part 107 recency exam does start August 31st of this year. Um, as of right now, we believe it'll be the same system as usual. We are hoping to see some sort of streamlined system like what the Part 61 pilots saw with Part 107. I think that would be really good. That would but be great. we also don't know if the FAA is trying to see who all wants to keep their license. Because hmm. there are still a lot of people who have not gotten their license. In fact... Now that we have the airman registry and you can just look up if someone has a license really quick, it really makes it easy, you know, just to give FISDO a local call and be like, you know, I saw someone writing an article about using drones at weddings and I looked him up in the airman registry and I found nada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? because, you know, they don't have the manpower to be doing that kind of stuff. So, And you know, I don't blame them either. I, I don't mean, either. Yeah, so. I don't either. There's only so much of that that can be done. And, and a lot of it, I guess, would come from the self-policing of the industry. Um, well, not that we're go ahead. encouraging people necessarily to rat each other out. We've always suggested that you talk to someone before you go beyond that, right? True. And the fact that now that we have Part 107, it is a clear law. It is kind of a different um, arena that we're playing in. But not only that, the FAA does have this whole compliance philosophy. So if the guy is nice to the FAA... 
nothing happens to him. It's like, a, you can't fly anymore until you get a license. You know, and if the guy flies again and doesn't have a license, oh yeah, they're gonna come down on him like a ton of bricks. But As the they first, should. but the first time they're gonna be like, uh, they're, they're gonna be like, give me your wrist, mm-hmm. I'm gonna slap it. Mm-hmm. Here's a rule: they ca- they carry rulers in their back pocket. <laughs> Don't fly anymore <laughs> until you get your part 107. <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be okay. Well, they're going to need to come out with something relatively quickly as it relates to what is going to be um, on hand for the recency exam mm-hmm. or the recency update, whatever you want to call it. That is true. By the way, the UAS Symposium, they are supposed to announce something with it, and Vic wants us to go to that. Where is that? Baltimore. Oh, okay. It's about 60 miles from home, Rob. That is less than a month away. Should we go? Um, okay, we're going to have a little meeting here okay, ready? on the podcast. Three, two, one. Should we go? <gasps> no. <laughs> I say yes. <laughs> Let's get Tim in here for the tiebreaker. Okay. Anyways, we'll get back to you on the answer Probably about go. the symposium. Yeah. But one point that, uh, you know, actually on my phone call to Patrick Egan this, this weekend, he was saying he doesn't like how you have to pay money to go to the FAA symposium. Yeah, I because agree. Because it's a federal program. It's something that we're paying for out of our taxes anyway. We yep. should be able to go without paying money. Um, I think that okay. anyone should be able to go. Let me ask you this. Yes. Tell me what you guys think. Why Why would you want to go? To the symposium? Mm-hmm. Well, they could just watch our show and they'll get all the information they need. Ooh, you see what I did there? No. You're, what do you mean? The people can watch the show because... They can watch our show. Right. Because we're going to go and report on what happens. True, but there will be other people there reporting that we could probably tap into. No. There's not much on it here. Like, what the heck are they even doing? You won't want to miss breakout and workshop sessions <laughs> covering today's hot topics air traffic automation, remote identification and tracking, and expanded operations. I guess my, the point that I'm trying to make by asking that question is do we have an opportunity to? have some influence, like to speak our minds, to... I think on a lower level, we do. I think ba- I think with our relationships with the FAA, I think we do. And I would, or, you know, I'd like to hope that we do. Yeah, um, I would hope so as well. I mean, you know... I... Jetson's panel, that sounds fun. Wow. I want to be a part of that. So I know that they're going to be talking about flight over people here. I know they're going to be talking about part 107 recency. Ooh, who's on the Jetson's panel? Because if Agit Pai was going, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was Anyways. a little swipe at the FCC. Um, anyway, uh, Earl Lawrence will be there. Hey, that's always good. Mark Moore, Engineering Director of Aviation for Uber. Excuse that's me? That's actually kind of interesting. For Uber? For Uber. Look at this. Travis Mason, Vice President of Public Policy and Regulatory Affairs, Airbus. Because Airbus is starting to come out with drones. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, I mean, Airbus obviously is probably to transport People, right? I would mm-hmm. imagine. Obviously, that's what Uber's doing. They're trying to sort of stay in front of transporting people with uh, UAVs. Interesting. Future SUAS challenges. Let's hear. Let's go down. Go down. Down. You're too high. Go down. Yeah, there you go. Future SUAS challenges. I was saying, like, you know, there, yeah. Yeah, see, they're talking about cellular connectivity, onboard intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, this will be interesting. So oh, recognition. anyway, it, it sounds like it'll be an interesting symposium. And, and we are still, I mean, I think it's fair to say we're still in the kind of the early throes of this industry and there's just so much changing so fast. And so I don't know, maybe, maybe we should all go. I'm kidding. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for us today, guys on that bombshell. We will let you know whether we go or not. We probably will because it's kind of important and they're going to be announcing a lot of changes that are going to be going on. That is a drone right there. Holy cow. It's like an X shape with a T and there's 8, 10, 12 props on it. Wow. Interesting. That's anyway, intense. on that bombshell, it's going to do it for us today, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for leaving us reviews. Hope you have a great week. Go out there and fly. The weather is outstanding for flying if you're on the West Coast or in the South. But anyway, um, we have a big announcement, by the way, on Friday. So stay tuned to hear what that is. But Drone You may be coming to a city near you and permanently. So anyway, lots to talk about. We'll, we'll talk to you later. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is... 
another episode of Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.